Hello friends, in the previous session we have just started with the magnetization curve and then we discussed the terminal characteristic of a DC shunt motor. So in this particular session, let us do a simple numerical to understand all these concepts in a much better fashion. Always numericals are very important to reinforce the concepts that you are learning in theory. Okay, so the simple numerical let us take. So let us see what is given. It is a 50 HP motor, the 250 volt motor. It means that this would be the terminal voltage VT of the motor. And given is that it is a DC shunt motor and it has compensating winding. The compensating winding means that it does not have the flux weakening effect. So as the armature current increases, the flux would remain constant and it would not weaken. So that is the importance of this compensating winding. Other than that, you are having RA to be 0.06 ohm and the total field resistance, including the variable conditions is 50 ohm and the no load speed. That means when the no motor is not drawing any current, it runs at 1200 RPM at the no load condition. All right. So let's just draw the equivalent circuit here so that we can just put down whatever we have seen now. So it is a shunt motor, right? So let me just put the shunt winding now. So the given things are, so the equivalent circuit would look like something like this. Okay. So this is 250 volt. Vt is equal to 250 volt. So in the first problem, I will be writing everything totally. So this is R adjust plus R field and this is 50 ohms. Okay. And this is not important for us now. And let us see what is given in the armature. The armature resistance RA is to be given as 0 0.06 ohms. And let us draw the armature here. So the armature and you know that this is going to generate a voltage EA. Okay. And so this is the input current. So what they have asked in this question is to find the speed of the motor when the input current is 100 amperes, 200 amperes and 300 amperes. Along with that, you have to find what is the torque induced when the input current is 100 amperes, 200 amperes and 300. This word is important input current. It is not armature current. It is the input current to the machine. So the machine is including the field winding. So the input current is this particular current, which I usually put it as IL. So I, this is IL and this is IA and this is the I field. Okay. So the relations, you know, clearly. Now. <coughs> You have to find the speed of the motor, right? Now, the only equation that we have learned till now, two equations, is that the torque induced is equal to K phi into IA and the EMF generated in the armature is K phi into N, all right? And you know that the power converted EA into IA will be equal to the torque induced multiplied by the omega. These are the equations that we are going to require. In fact, we don't need this equation at this time you will be needing only these two equations. Okay, So these are the equations that we know. Clearly, you can see that this equation here, this equation here is a, this EA is dependent on speed. Okay, So if I write EA at no load, okay, say EA at no load will be equal to K into phi. Now this is a shunt machine and there is nothing mentioned about the change in flux and the flux is not going to change due to armature reaction. So these two quantities are also constant and the EA at no load will be the speed at no load, which is usually represented by N0. So the no load speed is usually N0 is equal to 1200 RPM, right? EA at no load is K phi into N0. And now what will be the EA at 100 amperes? Okay, so the first condition is EA at 100 amperes. So EA at 100 amperes will be equal to K phi into N at 100 amperes. And what is the thing which we have to find here? We have to find the speed of the motor N when it is at 100 amperes, 200 amperes and 300 amperes. So you can clearly divide these two equations. So N at 100 amperes by N0 will be equal to EA at 100 amperes divided by EA at no load. So let me put it as EA0. So N at 100 will be equal to N0 into EA at 100 divided by EA at 0. So if you, you know this right, N0 you know already it is given to be 1200 RPM. You have to just find EA0, 100 and EA0. Let us see how we can find this. All right. So let me just uh, take this diagram here and let me put it into a simplified form here. Okay. Like a circuit problem. Let us use it as a circuit problem here. So here, you know, this is going to be my, okay, the field RF. So this is 50 ohms. This is IF 
and uh, here I am going to put the armature here. So this is 0 0.06 ohms RA and this is going to be my EA here like this and this is VT 250 volts. Okay. So the first condition was N at 100 ampere. You have to find N at 100 amperes. So you already know that the N at 100 amperes was equal to N0 into EA at 100 amperes divided by EA at 0. Okay. So let me just check if that I don't want to make any mistakes now. Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing. So let us find each of these terms now. So what is EA0? Okay. So let us first find EA0. Now the only equation that you know which has a good relation which you can use here is that the relation is you already know that Vt is equal to Ea plus Iara. Okay. Now at no load, at no load, Vt is going to be constant because that is the input and Ea will be Ea at no load plus. Now what will be, this is Ia0, Ia at no load and into Ra. Now what will be Ia at no load? Ia at no load will be equal to 0 ampere because it is not taking any load, right? So Vt will be equal to Ea0 plus 0 into Ra. So it will be equal to Ea0. So Vt is already given to be 250 volts, right? Therefore, Ea0 will be equal to 250 volts. Okay, so that's over. Now next what we have to find, we have to find Ea at 100. Again you use the relation Vt is equal to Ea at 100 amperes, Ea at 100 amperes plus Ia at 100 into Ra. Okay, so now this is your Il, this is your Ia and this is your If. So what is Ia at 100 amperes? So you can clearly see from this, you can put a simple KCL here. IL will be equal to IA plus IF. Now we are going to fight at the 100 ampere condition, right? So 100 amperes will be this one. This is going to be the 100 ampere. So 100 is equal to IA plus IF. Okay, so IA at 100 amperes. So IA at 100 amperes equal to IA 100 plus IF is equal to 100, all right? Now what is IF value? IF you can clearly see it is the current through this particular resistance and the voltage across that is 250 volt. Now IF will be equal to 250 divided by 50 which is equal to 5 amperes. Alright that's easy. So IA at 100 will be equal to 100 minus 5 which is equal to 95 amperes. Okay. So now you know all these things so I can substitute this here. So now 250 you can just substitute it here right. 250 equal to EA at 100 plus 95 into RA into 0 0.06. Some people make a mistake of putting 100 here. Now in exams like gate, if you put 100 here and find the value, there will be an option corresponding to that also. So you will go and check the wrong option. Hmm? So make sure that you don't mistake this thing. IA is equal to 95 amperes. So let us find what will be EA here now. So EA at 100 will be equal to, let me just check what is the value. It is 244.3 volt. So now let's substitute everything. So N at 100 will be equal to N0. N0 is 1200 into Ea at 100 which is 244.3 divided by Ea0. Ea0 is 250. And that will be given to be 1172.64 RPM. You can use your calculators and find everything. Okay. Now the second part of this, the second thing is to find N at 200 amperes, right? So it's very easy. You follow the same procedure. So Vt is equal to Ea at 200 plus Ia at 200 into Ra. Now the important thing here is that this field current is not going to change for any current of armature because field current is directly 250 by 50. Any condition 250 by 50 is going to be the field current. All right. So Ia at 20, Ia at 200, sorry, will be equal to the line current now is 200 amperes, 200 minus, what was that, uh, 5, right, 5. So it is going to be 195 amperes, okay. So 250 is equal to Ea at 200, Ea at 200 plus 195 into 0 0.06, okay. So Ea at 200 will be equal to, let me just check the value now. Ea at 200 will be 
3 volts okay 238.3 volts so now n at 200 will be equal to n0 into ea at 200 divided by ea0 okay only the thing thing is changing is this particular value top value so it is 1200 multiplied by ea at 200 is 238.3 divided by ea0 was 250 volts so if you substitute this you are going to get 1143.84 rpm okay and this was b <coughs> and next is c c is n at 300 amperes again the procedure is same vt is equal to ea at 300 plus ia at 300 into r so don't go around and put ia at 200 here ea at 300 plus ia at 300 now what will be ia at 300 it will be naturally il minus if so what is the line current here now line current is 300 amperes so 300 minus 5 which is equal to 295 amperes so it's a very powerful and big motor here so this is 250 is equal to ea at 300 plus 295 into 0.06 okay so ea at 300 now here it would be <coughs> 232.3 volts 232.3 volts so n at 300 n at 300 amperes will be equal to n0 1200 multiplied by ea at 300 232.3 Divided by two fifty, and that will give you one one five triple one five point zero four rpm. Okay, so we have found out the value of n at two one hundred amperes, n at two hundred amperes, and n at three hundred amperes. All right. So now next part was torque induced at these three conditions. So torque induced at hundred amperes. Let us see how we can find that. Now you know that the relation is I A into I A. This is equal to torque induced multiplied by omega. Okay, now it's not n here; it's omega. Remember, and omega is equal to two pi n by sixty. And we have found out all the values at uh, n as rpm. So let us put all these values here. You want it at hundred amperes, right? So E A is the value which is going to change. Then E A at hundred is into I A at hundred will be the torque induced at hundred incoming multiplied by omega at hundred. Okay, so you know that E A at hundred was equal to. Let me just see. Yeah, E A at hundred was equal to two forty four point three. You can refer the previous slide and you can find that. Into I A at hundred was ninety five, is equal to torque induced at hundred, multiplied by. Don't directly put this N at hundred. It is uh, omega at hundred. Now, if you put N at hundred and find the value, that same option will be there in the Get exam and you will go and mark it and you will get the wrong answer. So it is two pi into what is n at hundred amperes? It was one one seven. Let me just check the value here. One one seven two point six four. One one seven two point six four by sixty. Now if you find the torque induced at hundred amperes, now you will be getting a value of one eighty eight point nine nine six newton meter. You can do all the calculations, all right? Now next is torque induced at 200 amperes. So again the same equation, E A I A is equal to torque induced into omega. Now <clears throat> you are finding at the the input current of 200 amperes. So 200, I A at 200, torque induced at 200, and omega at 200. So E A at 200 was 238.3 multiplied by I A at 200 was 2 sorry 195 is equal to torque induced at 200. Multiplied by two pi into what was n at two hundred? It was one one four three point eight four divided by sixty. So if you substitute this value and find the torque induced at two hundred, you will get a value to be three eighty eight newton meter. Okay, and the same way torque induced at three hundred amperes will be equal to the procedure is E A at three hundred multiplied by I A at three hundred amperes. Is equal to torque induced at 300 multiplied by omega at 300. Okay, so let me just substitute everything once again. So it is 232.3 multiplied by uh, IA at 300 was 295 amperes multiplied by torque induced at 300 multiplied by 2 pi into what was N at 300? 1115.04 by 60. So the torque induced at 300 rpm 
300 amperes is equal to 587 newton meter now i want you all to take your calculator substitute these things and then find the value just don't look at this and directly write it because if you unless you practice using the calculator you will not be able to use it properly you have to sit and work out the problem till the end till you get the answer now just because you know the procedure please don't stop it there find the final answer make sure that you have got the correct answer and only then you stop now with this let us just uh, draw the torque speed characteristic of this particular problem so in the next page let us see the torque speed characteristics now i have just drawn the graphs and kept and i have taken all these values here properly <coughs> now we are just going to draw an approximate graph all right and so when the torque <coughs> at 100 amperes torque at 100 amperes was around 188 right just take it somewhere it would be this is 175 and it will be somewhere here and the speed was around 1172 so it was something here somewhere here okay so this is the first point and the second point when the torque was around 388 newton meter right so let me just put two more points here 350 and 400 so 380 would be somewhere here and uh, i think i will have to just rearrange this little bit here I'll just put it here, yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, yeah, and the torque when at three eighty, the speed is around one one four three. So let me just take it somewhere here. Okay, one one four three. And when it is at five hundred, okay, four fifty. And oh, <laughs> I think I will have to just uh, change it once again. Sorry for that. I'll just shrink it out. this is okay sorry for that and this is 400 I just just think that the value would be so large and it is 600 so 587 so around somewhere here the speed would be 1115 okay 1115 would be somewhere here okay somewhere here so if you just plot the graph you can see it's a linear type of graph in ideal if you plot it properly in a graph you would get something like this okay or you would get something like this so that would be the ideal condition and if you just move it around here like this so if this is some 1200 if you move around like this at torque induced equal to zero torque induced equal to, that is a no load condition you should go and hit the 1200 rpm okay so these are the various points of which we have found out the values so please go through this problem once twice or thrice you understand if you have any doubts put it in the comments down below and uh, if you like this video please like share and subscribe the channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you